Hi everyone, in this video you're going to see me wear a lot of different outfits because over the next couple of evenings I'll be performing a major service in my 991.2 Porsche Carrera T and I'm taking you on this journey with me. And I really do mean a major service because these are all the parts that I'm going to be replacing starting with this performance air filter, OEM spark plugs, an oil change, potentially a brake flush, assuming the brake fluid is bad, and to find out if it's good or bad, we're gonna be using this, this nifty tester. In preparation for my track day, I'm gonna be swapping my track pads. We're gonna replace all the cabin and interior filters. We're also gonna be swapping the gas cap gasket. This is very much neglected by many, but it's absolutely crucial that you stay on top of it. We're gonna be replacing the wipers and if we get really, really funky, we might be replacing the accessory belt. And even though I only have 18 and a half thousand miles on the car, the car is four years old. So the maintenance interval calls for a lot of these things. To do this job, I put up the car on my awesome quick jack. And since it's very rear heavy, I always use this transmission jack to support the car from the back. I'm gonna accelerate through some of the easy stuff and also there's a lot of videos out there which demonstrate what I'm about to do. The first thing we actually need to do to do anything is to remove the rear bumper and to do so, we've gotta undo a bunch of screws which happen to be here behind the wheel well, at the bottom, right over here and under the tail lights. First time doing it, it took me 30 minutes. Two things to note. The first thing is, uh, before you remove the mopper, you have to disconnect these cables behind the tail lights. Now, to disconnect them, you kind of have to release them from this little flap. So you open up the flap, both cables come out, and then you can simply unpop them. And then, when you remove the spoiler, it is absolutely crucial that you loosen up the oil filler uh, thingy. So you've got a 10 millimeter heat millimeter here, you loosen it up and then that way you can wiggle it out. And to keep myself organized, I have these cups to put all the special bolts in them. So this is the spoiler, this is the bumper, this is the tail lights. Next we have to move these vacuum lines aside. I've seen videos of people disconnecting the vacuum lines here. What I found, something to be easier is, you disconnect this sensor here, unplug it from here. See this sits on this little uh, slider. And then you simply pop all the connectors, all the vacuum lines from its poppers, uh, and you have pretty much everything out of the way. Can we use that a few moments later from Carwell? A few moments later. So there's one vacuum line here at the bottom. But anyways, out with the old and in with the new. One thing I forgot to add, I did inspect the uh, accessory belt and it looks absolutely brand new, no tears or anything. Only 18,000 miles on it. I'm gonna wait until the next major service, so at 40,000 miles, I'm gonna replace it. Uh, there's really no sense to, uh, to replace it. And we're done with day one of the project. I spent, what, uh, the last two hours doing this uh, bumper removal and uh, removing the air filter, which, by the way, is uh, pretty uh, pretty bad after 18,000 miles. So, so I'm glad I replaced it. Day two of the project and the car is still stripped out. I've got to say, I really like the way it looks. Now we're going to tackle two things. I'm going to do an oil change and while the oil is dripping, I'm going to swap the brake pads. The drain plug is obviously located at the bottom. You can either use a screwdriver to put it in or you can use this nifty tool. It fits right in and check this out. You simply undo it. Ugh. Oh shoot, there's always an issue. Emergency rescue, for some reason, the oil thing is not absorbing any oil.
Greetings from the future. That time lapse was a recording mistake. So a couple of takeaways from what just happened. Use your handy dandy tool to insert a new drain plug underneath. And then when you replace the actual filter, you have to use a 36 mil wrench. So 36 mil, see, it comes right out. As you take out the filter, you take out the housing and it kind of pops out this way. Uh, replace the old one, put the new one back in, tighten it to 25 newton meters. And last but not least, you add eight quarts of engine oil. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna ask you to remind me to use my handy dandy tool and reset the oil change interval. As we're waiting for the oil to drain, we're gonna swap out the pads on this AP Racing kit, which I got from Keys Motorsports. I'm gonna link it in the description of this video. Fantastic uh, a brake kit, but it's also super easy to swap out the pads. You've got these two Allen bolts, and then you gotta knock out these two pins with something like that, and uh, you should be good to go. And out with the old, in with the new. These are the DS2500. These are the DS1.11, which are track pads. They're gonna squeal a little bit. Now, to prevent the squeal, uh, we're gonna apply schmear to the back surface of these pads, as well as the corners. And it was pretty straightforward. It took me about 20 minutes to do the remaining three. And the next thing is we have to check our uh, brake fluid, but we have to see if there's any moisture in it or whatnot, and whatnot. And to do it is we have this tool and it's pretty handy. Open up the brake reservoir cap, stick it in, and it tells you the moisture level. And ugh. in our case, it is still in the okay and in the upper range of the okay. So we don't have to flush the fluid after all. Obviously I'm leaving the worst for last, the spark plugs. So now I'm gonna change this filter out with the old. I only have 4,000 miles on this one in a year, 4,000 miles, and it got a little darker. So it's important to replace it because that's the air that you're breathing. And while we're here, we're also going to replace another item that's very neglected from time to time. And that is the windshield wipers. Replacing it is super simple. You press this little button, it comes out and you insert the new set. Oh yeah. And we're good to go. And then there's also this cabin filter in the cabin and it is located in the passenger footwell. Essentially you undo this plastic piece and it comes right out. Out with the old and in with the new. Well, you also may be wondering, what do I have in my footwell? Well, this is my setup because this time as I installed both my dash cam as well as my radar detector, I didn't hardwire it, but I decided to run the cables all the way down to the footwell cigarette lighter. You thought I forgot about the gas cap seal where well, I almost did. Anyways, uh, this one is here and to do it, you just simply take a pry tool, remove the old one. So this is the replacement. This one even feels a bit more rubbery, the new one. So uh, for a couple of quid, it's really not a big deal. And it slides in place like this. Good to go. There are two things left in my major maintenance. The first one is this fuel injector cleaner. I use it every couple of thousand miles and it really, really makes a huge difference. The second task are the spark plugs. Before we get to that day number three, I just wanted to call out one last thing. These TLG mud flaps. So these are the mud flaps that I create. I hand make them and I sort of sell them on the side for the Porsche community. It really started with the BMW community. You can, you can Google TLG mud flaps and you can see uh, what comes out. But essentially, when I first got the car, I had it fully PPF'd and soon after, see, I got this little PPF scratch because, especially when you're running a wider setup or spacers, because of the fact that this is a wide body kit or 911s have these white hips, you get a lot of overspray. These mud flaps, which really blend in once you put the wheels on, really, really protect the side of the car. Are they perfect? No. But I recently took this car on a winter trip and it really, really protected the sides of my precious depreciating asset. If you want your set, I'm gonna tell you how. Just check out the video description. Day three of my adventure and I'm gonna tackle the spark plugs starting 
from the driver's side. We need to gain access to one, two, three coil packs. We can pop them out and pop the spark plugs out and in. Uh, but to get to it, we need to remove this turbo pipe. There's an E10 down here and a seven mil up there. Now we gotta remove the heat shield that's held by these two T30 torque screws. There's one here and there's one in the back. To aid with this job, I'm using this tiny ratcheting tool. The heat shield is removed. The only thing that's standing in the way is this clip that's attached to the top of it. This is where the clip was. It basically sits on top, so you're gonna push it up with a screwdriver. Now, we're gonna start with the one that's all the way in the back. I'm using my tiny, tiny wrench. By reaching from the back, I was able to disconnect the coil pack. Oh, so we take out the coil pack through the back. I was trying to finagle this whole pipe, but then I realized that I could actually just slide it, which gives you a lot more access. And I was able to take this out. So obviously the difference is the new one is new and the old one is old. So now we're gonna take some grease, put it just at the tip here. Do not put any of it on the thread. And now these are pre-gapped because these are OEM. So you put it in the socket actually pretty cool it's magnetic and then we're going to insert it back in and to do it is again extremely difficult for me to show you but I'm going in from the back from behind the catalytic converter you see where my fingers are kind of wiggling and from there you've got a lot more room to play with and the trick is left thread it first and then tighten it to the right removing this pipe from the turbo made all the difference. And look, you can easily go in there with just a, just a slight, slight wobble extension. And now this allows us to properly torque it and the spec calls for 17 uh, foot pounds. Yeah! Just make sure the socket comes out. Oh yeah. So now we're gonna insert the coil pack back in. We can plug it back in. Thumbs up. The remaining two should be a walk in the park. So let's remove the coil pack first. And for this one, I'm just gonna use a, a long extension. It's just easier than getting in with a tiny tool. I unclipped it and it's just very hard to slide it out with my hands. So I'm just using a screwdriver. We can now slide out the coil pack. Oh, you heard that. And this again is a walk in the park, but you have to pay attention to the fact that the spark plug is not straight, it's at an angle. So just be mindful of that. But if you've got wobble extensions, they'll account for the angle. Oh yes. Put some grease on the tip. And before you put back the, the cold pack, I'm just gonna disconnect the first one. Then we'll put the coat pack back in and just make sure it clicks. And let's not forget about the middle one. And this side is done. Now, obviously, we've got to put the piping back together, but if you removed it, you kind of know how to put it back together. Put the heat shield back on, and, uh, and this is good to go. It took me about an hour, so uh, not too bad for me doing it for the first time. Now, on the passenger side, same thing E10 at the bottom, 7 mil up top. That comes up much faster. You can simply let it dangle at the bottom. We also have a very similar heat shield situation with screws here and one in the back. And luckily there's no clip. This can simply slide backwards. And now you can use an extension or a tiny ratchet to undo the coil pack. And now try to reach the clip. Uh, and similar to what we did on the other side, uh, we're gonna squeeze it through here, except the piping here is different, so it's easier to just slide it in and start unscrewing everything. Wow, this one was sitting super tight. And again, we'll torque it to 17 foot-pounds. This goes in next, but there's no way I can show it to you on camera. Or maybe there is a way. 
Now we're gonna grab the wiring, clip it in place. Okay, so the middle one is loosened up. I'm gonna slide out this connector. Actually, we're gonna take out the first one because once we take out the first one, this will allow me to, or this will give me more room to slide out this wiring loom. So press the button and then slide it out with a screwdriver. There we go. The idea is remove this, get it out of the way, then slide this out. This now allows us to gain extra access. So the middle one comes out with just a small extension. Oh, there she is. And let's slide it back. 70, right? 17. I was trying to see if you're paying attention. One more to go. And I'm really leaving the easiest for last. Oh yeah. In with the new. So now we're gonna slide the middle coil pack. There we go. And let's put back the last one. And that is in, let's click it in place. The last thing to do is tighten it. Now, we're gonna put the piping back together. Obviously the heat shield goes back first. In case you have trouble getting the pipe in, this is what worked for me on the other side. Put the top one in first, it kind of clicks in place. See how simple it is? And then this gets aligned. Then this band goes over, that is it. Also, don't forget to tighten this one up here. I can't believe we're done. Day three, and I've been working with two hours uh, each night, so six hours total. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, inspect everything, but for the most part, I mean, this is, uh, this is, pretty, much, uh, this is pretty much done. While I was uh, sort of taking the trash out, I would take the opportunity to clean the engine bay. I also cleaned some of the plastics here and there, even though, oh, I also cleaned the tips. Even though no one's gonna see it, it kinda makes me happy that I'm putting together a pretty clean car. It's almost hard to believe we're at the bumper connection phase. Now, you will notice that I attach masking tape here. My car is fully PPF, so technically I don't have to do it, but I'm doing it myself just in case when I'm attaching the bumper, I ding it. This will give me that extra uh, protection. But again, as you're reattaching the bumper, be mindful of the cables that you have to plug in on each side. And simply, can you tell me, am I good on that side? Wait a minute. <laughs> Now all the bumper screws are the same, except the ones that are more oxidized are at the bottom. So we're gonna pick the cleanest ones and we're gonna put them up top. The good news is the cups are empty, so all the nuts and bolts are accounted for. The bad news is it's almost 1 a.m., so I cannot start the car and reset uh, the oil and all that stuff. The only thing I can do before I go to bed is lower that spoiler because it should not be up there like that. We'll see you tomorrow for a proper conclusion. Who had a good night of sleep? Not this guy. I was anxiously waiting for this moment, and then I woke up. My son was sick, so it's the afternoon. And I can finally start the car. All right, let's see. Moment of truth. I'm kind of excited. You know what? There's no sugar coating it. Let's just do it. So we're gonna let the car warm up a little bit so we can check the oil level. But I actually you to remind me to reset the oil change interval, and we're gonna use this tool. And this is how you do it. You go to Porsche, Smartvin, Special Functions, Oil Reset, Reset Maintenance Interval. Okay, we're gonna do Main Maintenance, Intermediate Maintenance, and Oil Service. We did it all. Okay, we have to input 
the date, March 19th, 2023, completed. Maintenance interval successfully reset. And we are done. The car is still warming up. I'm not gonna put the wheels back on because I'm gonna film another video where I put on my aftermarket wheels that I revealed a couple of videos ago. I just never installed them. But now you know what it takes to do a major service on a Porsche 911. And as you could tell, except minor hiccups here and there, it is, it is pretty straightforward, assuming you've got the right set of tools tools that I've linked down in the video description so you can have everything in one place. The extensions uh, are an absolute must as you saw from the spark plug video and you, you just have to have the tools to do this job but once you invest in a proper set of tools the other investment is your time and uh, the work the reward you get uh, from by doing it yourself is just absolutely amazing and there's just something about doing work on your car and realizing how it works and how the you know what it takes to take things apart so you understand it better you connect with the car better i absolutely love it coming into this project i was uh, sort of apprehensive i was worried about oh maybe i can't do it but but i always have that in the back of my mind cars are built by people they're meant to be worked on by people so if you kind of know what you're doing you should be fine anyways thank you very much for watching if you have any questions or comments leave them down below uh, i'll try to answer every single one of them and i hope to see you in the next video bye bye Who am I kidding? Let's go for a quick test drive. I'm kind of cheating because I'm filming this on the new set of wheels that I installed in the next video. But it's so cold outside that the tires have no grip. They're absolutely slipping. So I cannot bed the, the pads properly in. Woo -hoo -hoo. See how it's sliding? What a difference, summer tires. But Am I hearing a bit more induction noise? Maybe when I really do rev it up towards the higher rev range, let's see. Okay. You can hear that the camera's not gonna pick it up. Yep. The camera's definitely not gonna pick it up, but I like it.